So I'm going to kind of go over now how we get the likelihood functions. So I'm going to explain how we um, can get the likelihood um, log likelihood values again um, and show you sort of how we get it to converge for C um, AG um, at the end. But let me just kind of show you now um, we're going on with GAG and we're going to find what is the log likelihood value. So let me continue. And again, this is continuing on from um, mean, the EM expectation maximization algorithm. So what we have calculated again is, um, you know, we were looking at GAG and we were updating um, the Z matrix and the P matrix, which is a probability weighted matrix, the PWM, um, after the expectation step, the E step and the maximization step. So now um, we've gotten all these values. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the log likelihood function over here. And what you'll see is that the total log likelihood, um, so logarithmic E, which is natural log, is we go over all the sequences from one to four. Then we look at the natural log of one over M. So M is the number of starting positions for the motifs. So there are four starting positions possible, or it's the same thing as the number of columns in the Z matrix. And then we see this is one over M. And we have the starting position from 1 to m. And we're going to find the probability of the sequence given the um, starting positions um, you know, is at a certain location within the sequence, like as we had done before. And we're going to um, calculate this probability weighted matrix. So here, what we're going to see is um, basically, um, this is how we can simplify the log likelihood formula. So again, we're trying to see for all the different start positions, what would be the probability of us getting that sequence of DNA bases. So, um, you know, this is sequence one to four. And I sort of just expand this out because we have these four positions that um, are possible for the starting positions um, for each sequence, four possible motifs. And we're using this updated. So this is the updated probability weighted matrix for GAG after we have run, um, you know, the um, M step. So we got this um, updated probability weighted matrix and we're going to plug this in. So when we do this math, we come down to negative 29.006. But how did we come to that value? So here's a little bit of a more detailed um, view of how we um, got these total log likelihood values. So let me sort of um, bring this down here. And what you're going to notice is the following that um, we essentially take the logarithm of, of this and then we add in the um, logarithm of e for each of these, we take this logarithm value. And um, what I'm going to do is take this logarithmic value here and I'm also gonna take this logarithmic value and um, this logarithmic value as well. So, um, and then I'm gonna take like the one over four. I think this might be a little bit um, confusing right now. So I'm just going to just say that this is how we take our total log likelihood. Um, so let me just bring this down over here. So what you see is that we're looking at all the possible start positions and um, what we see is that whatever um, for each sequence, let's hold each sequence constant and let's look at all the possible four starting positions. So this point here is saying that, okay, let's focus um, for sequence one. Let's just hold the sequence one constant here. That's what this is saying. Let's hold the sequence one constant. And then let us look at all of these four possible starting positions. That's what this is saying here. Let's look at all these four possible starting positions. Um, sorry, I should have made this uh, like this color, like a different color. It's all these four possible starting positions here. And within these four starting positions, we're just going to calculate the probability of a sequence um, given the motif starting position. So what we're going to do is we're just going to calculate what um, over here, we're going to calculate this probability given each of these starts. So what this is um, here, this part here is pretty much just me figuring out, okay, so let's say that I start out um, 
So this um, 0 0.00018276 is the probability of um, sequence one. This is the basis in sequence one, given that the motif starts in position one, and we are using updated GAG motif, um, um, uh, GAT motif PAWM. That's what this is telling me, um, in essence, that is 0 0.00018276. So we finish calculating these values here and um, we get all these values, all of these values here. Okay, so we get all those values and then what do we do? We just sum them up together. When we sum them up together, we then get this total value here. So we sum these up together, which is what this is doing here. And then we get this value, which is 0 0.00029. Um, so that value here is um, what happens here. Actually, I should move this inside here. So this whole logarithm is actually applied on this uh, sequence here. So I'm going to say, okay, well, what I've calculated right now is um, for this sequence, i equals one, I have actually calculated that this value here is going to be equal to um, 0 0.002939. Um, that divided by four, which is equal to 0 0.00, .00 one eight four. That is what it's equal to. And then this value is going to go right over here. And then what we do with this value next is we will take the uh, natural logarithm of this value. And then we're going to get our negative 7.2161. Um, one. So what this is, is this is essentially me taking the natural logarithm ln of 0 0.0000184. So when we have this value here, this is key because this is what we want to look at. This value right here is sort of like what we are getting for each of these sequences. So what we have gotten for this whole part here for the sequence one is this negative 7.2161. And we're going to do the same for each of these sequences. So in the end, we're sorry about the confusion in the notation right now. Um, so what we are going to have is, this is what the formula looks like. Let me just go back up and update it again. So guys, just, you know, um, it's the logarithm of this inside here. I just had made a little mistake here. But this is the formula that you wanted. I had just moved this one fourth should be inside here, actually. Um, so definitely, yes, be careful in the future. Um, think, you know, with this formula. But again, all we're doing is we are just kind of going through each of these sequences. For each of these sequences, then we're going to have one for x2 as well, where um, what we're gonna do is the same thing for X2. So um, let's focus on this being held at um, I equals two now. If we are looking at this sequence two, this is what we're looking at here. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to go inside, find this probability for all four of these. We're gonna focus on all four of those. Oh, these. Okay, so we're going to focus right here on that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sum these values up together again. And when we sum these values right here, we are going to then get this 0 0.04004013. And then we divide this by 4. So this is division by 4 because that's a division by m. We take this totals. You see from here, we have these totals. And then this is totals over m. And that's what we're doing here. So we're dividing by m, which is 4. And that is what we are getting inside here. This part right here 
is going to be, um, for the second sequence, it's going to be equal to 0 0.000251. That's what that's equal to. Then from that one, we take the um, natural logarithm of that and we then get the following. So we take ln of this, ln of this value of this 0 0.02251, and then we get that. That's what we take the natural logarithm of it. So that's how we get each of these values basically. Um, and then we're going to plug that in. So in the end, what you'll see is um, that we, this is the, how we derive it for the second sequence. So we're basically going through each sequence. We're figuring out how likely is it of us getting any of these um, observed start points. We look at all possible starting points and find the probability of, of, the, of us having the sequence if we're starting at positions one, two, three, or four. That's what these are saying, positions one, two, three, or four. That's what this J is saying, like for the sequence. So what's the probability of us getting GTC, AGG? You know, like given if we start at each of these. So we see here, for instance, that um, position three would probably be the highest one for sequence one. It has the highest probability. Just something to note a little bit of, you know, that's something, you know, this has the highest. Um, it seems like over here that these two are tied, one and three are tied, but we probably would go with the first one that we find. This one seems like for three, it seems like the second one has 0 0.0036, which is the highest. So that's what that is measuring as well. So that's what this is measuring over here. This is negative seven, and that's why we sum these up to negative 29.0062. So thus, please note that the total log likelihood, if we begin with the P matrix for the motif GAG, is negative 29.0062. So what we did again is we calculate this value for um, each of our um, sequences um, and, and these things here. So let me just sort of note this again with um, pretty much um, like a little uh, diamond here. This value here, this is what we were trying to find. Oh, gosh what um, maybe I should note it like with um, drawing of this. Yeah, so, so this thing over here, each of these things here is what is um, here, here, and, and like for the other sequences as well. That's what that is, is essentially. Um, so what you're going to see here is that the total log likelihood, if we begin the, with the P matrix for motif GAG, was going to be negative 29.0062. And then like, all together across all four sequences, we have these 11 unique motifs like GAG. So we had selected GAG and used the probability weighted matrix. Now we go through and we repeat. So again, we just sum up these values over here have negative 29.0062. So we then have this as negative 28.817123. So we select the motif that gives us the highest log likelihood. So here it is CAG. So thus we will continue with CAG and run the EM algorithm for the Z matrix and the P matrix um, with, and find the probability weighted matrix corresponding to CAG. So what happened is we look here and we find which one gives us the highest log likelihood value. And indeed it is going to be um, CAG. So again, what we do is we select, please select the motif that gives us the highest log um, likelihood value. So we basically repeat the same thing as we had done. So we, again, what we had done is we had looked at this for, um, we had looked at this for GAG, like that's what we found above that it was like negative 29.0062. And we repeat this thing for all the other 10 motifs and we find the log likelihood values. And then we will go with CAG because it's the initialization that gives us the highest log likelihood. 
So remember that, um, that we could start with any probability weighted matrix. We have 11 motifs that we found in our data set. So those would probably be um, corresponding to different probability weighted matrices. We find the one that gives us the highest probability, um, begin, um, like the highest likelihood, sorry, the highest likelihood, we take that one and that's what we will work with. So we had all these 11 possible initializations. So we choose CAG because that gives us the highest lock likelihood value. That's what we will go with. So we will continue with CAG and run the EM algorithm for the C matrix and P matrix to get the PWM corresponding to CAG. So again, we did the same thing. Like again, we had found that this uh, negative 29.0062, it corresponds to this um, value over here of 29.0062. And we have this initial probability weighted matrix for CAG, but why did we select it? It gave us the highest log likelihood value. And that's the best bet. So when we started out, we had this initial probability weighted matrix for CAG, again, where we had um, this is 70%, this is 70% here for this A, and this is 70% here for this G. That's what we start out with. Then what we see is that um, we look here at the Z matrix, we initialize it to 0.25. Um, and, but what we do in the E step is we use this probability weighted matrix for CAG and the Z matrix here will then get updated in the E step to then be these values over here and they sum to one and they're normalized. So the Z matrix is updated. And then in the M step, we take this updated Z matrix and we have this um, original probability weighted matrix and we are going to then update it um, for CAG and get these values for the PWM. And the log likelihood for CAG will be approximately negative 28.817. And this is the highest of any of the other motifs. So we continue to run the EM algorithm using the PWM for CAG and the Z matrices to convergence. So we converge once our log likelihood um, stops changing by more than 0 0.001. So what we have done is this kind of shows again that our initial probability weighted matrix looks like these. This is when we start out, you know, and then um, what we're doing is after one iteration, these are the changes um, so like you can think of it this way, where we have the Z matrix and then we use this um, Z matrix to then get, um, so we use this. So the, the way EM works is we have like this um, initial um, PWM matrix, the, the P matrix, we use it to get our Z matrix. Then from here, we use the Z to get, it's like a zigzag in a way. We use this to get our, um, our, our P, P matrix in the um, M step. So what this looks like is this is the E step. Then this is the M step here. The M step is this part here. And then again, we have this um, E step here where we use this new um, probability weighted matrix to get our Z matrix. And um, then we compute these likelihood values here, which is what this is representing. That's what um, this right here is representing this likelihood value here. Then again, what we're doing is we're taking um, this Z matrix and we're getting our new probability weighted matrix and then using that one in, to get this Z matrix and update it, then calculating our new log, log likelihood values here, which is what we're finding. And we can see that it's like sort of changing as well. And then we continue to do that where we are where we're taking our Z matrix and using it to get our updated PWM and then our updated this updated PWM probability weighted matrix to get our Z matrix. Um, and we kind of had walked through this whole process of um, essentially deriving this step here where um, GAG in depth, we had talked about how we, we arrived at this first log likelihood. We choose um, CAG because it ends up giving us this, uh, this first iteration, this negative 28.817 is the highest value. And so we continue running it for all these iterations. So we take the CAG matrix and um, probability weighted matrix because it gave us the highest log likelihood. So we take it and we continue running it for all these iterations. So we said, okay, this gave us the highest log likelihood. Let us work with this over here. Let us work with, um, with this. Let us work with um, these matrices here. 
and let us run these two conversions. Let us run it till our log likelihood stops changing by something like maybe 0. 0.0001. So we keep running it through these iterations each time, you know, each time again using our PWM to get our Z matrix and our Z matrix to then estimate our P matrix and then you know, using them together to get our log likelihood. So these two are used for this log likelihood in each time. And we keep seeing that this log likelihood is changing. This is sort of on to the third decimal place, but for instance, you can still notice some minor, minor changes. Like this is like 0.374 and this corresponding value is like 0.373. So there are some slight changes that are still happening. Like even over here, for instance, 0.533, or um, 533 and 0.534. Like there's some slight changes that are still happening in this probability weighted matrix. And also in, um, you can definitely see it here as well in this Z matrix where this is like 0 0.036681 and this is like 0 0.0373. So, so there, there are some changes that are still happening and the likelihoods are still kind of changing and we're sort of analyzing this fall on this change in the likelihood values. And then we keep on doing it, you know, seeing, okay, how much of the likelihood change by? And you see that there are changes in the likelihood, but then we come down to the eighth iteration here and the ninth iteration where frankly, it's just so tiny, this change in this log likelihood value. So you can see it went from like 0.152 here to like 5.4, so that was still a change. But like in the last one, this change from here to here is really, really small, so like 5.5 five and it's like really, really small. So it's below our threshold of, um, so we have converged. So we've come to our final, yes, we have converged. Our EM algorithm has converged and we have our final probability weighted matrix and our Z matrix as well using CAG. So it really depends on your threshold and how strict you are, but we finally converged. So in the end, our um, EM algorithm results in this probability weighted matrix here. And based on the majority, we can kind of expect like, you know, the C, A, G here, C here, and then this is an A over here, and then a, a G over here, you know, like, like for the most part, even though it's slightly tied between the G and the C, which sort of makes sense because we did have like G, A, G motifs and C, A, G motifs as well. But um, there's a clear majority here, 53% and 58.4%. So we would expect to see quite a bit of A, G um, in the second and third bases. And here in the background, it does seem that like we would have like a lot of Gs in the background, like 32.6% um, probability of us finding a, C, a G in the non-motif position. So we have a final, um, you know, um, Z matrix here, this this here. And so this part here is what, um, what I'm talking about when I'm, you know, analyzing this final probability weighted matrix. They're the same. And now we're just going to look at the Z matrix and what we're going to see is the starting positions. Um, and what we essentially do is we go through the Z matrix, find the position in each sequence with the highest probability and assign that to one. So it's the probability of, you know, that our motif starts in position one of sequence one is 0 0.037. Um, so that's about like 3.7%, but we have like about, um, you know, 0.84. So about an 84.6% chance of our motif starting in position three here. So that's pretty high actually. So we're going to assign it here. And then here they're pretty tied in the second one, but we'll just go with the first one here. Um, here, this is 62.3% chance of the third sequence um, having the motif in the last possible starting position. And then here it's an overwhelming 84.6885% chance of the motif in the, in the fourth sequence starting in the second position. So that's what that's representing. So, um, so we choose again the values that maximized, um, you know, for the Z matrix. So, congratulations, guys! We did it. We went through the EM algorithm, you know, and we found it. And what we do is the ones that are maximum, we just sort of like cut out everything else. So we just cut this part out. We cut this part out. We cut all of this stuff out here. We cut all of this stuff out here as well. We cut this. We cut this as well, and we just set them to zero. And we essentially set this to one. Like, you know, we say that this is a one right here. This is a one. This is a one. Um, and this is a one right here. So that, that's what happens. Um, and so that's how we get like all these things here, the corresponding Z matrix.
and we just assign the majority for each at the end. But once we've converged, then that we say definitely that's that's a starting. And that's what we were looking at before. We really wanted with certainty, right? So we get these positions here again. And what this sort of tells us here is that, you know, that we have G, T, C, A, G, G, the motif is in position three of sequence one. Um, so we get that from here, which this is here. And in the sequence two, the motif is in position one of sequence two. So that corresponds to what this is here. So sequence two, position one is what this is here. And then um, motif um, is in position four of sequence three. So position four, again, we know that because of here. And lastly, what we see is that um, in um, for sequence four, the motif starts in position two. And again, you can think of this as like being positions like one, position two, oh gosh. That you can think of this as like one, two, three. Oh, okay, I can't sketch it, but basically like this is positions. You know, one, two, three, four, you know, like that's how these are like positions. You know, the G is one, the T is two, the C is three, and this is four. So that, that's how you can think of it in a way. And that's what these are mapping to. So this is saying that, hey, we are, this is position three. So this is position one, two, three. So this starts at position three. So that's CAG here. Then this J is equal to one. So we're starting here at GAG. That is our motif. We're going through three um, bases. That's our width. Here, J equals four. So we're going to start at one, two, three, four. Oop, okay, now we're starting at GAG. That's our motif. And then here we're starting at G equals J equals two. So we're getting one, two here, and then we have the C, A, G. So that's what this is. So motif is in position two of sequence four. So ultimately we found it. Like, so in fact, the gadget is sort of looking for those. And now what we can say is that, hey, look, um, we kind of found something. So pretty much um, it's cool because now we can say that this, hey, this is the motif here. Actually, sorry, let me use this one instead. This is the motif right here, CAG for the first sequence. We're starting in position three. And the second one, we're starting in position one. So this is the this is what it looks like. And in the um, fourth one, the fourth position is for the third sequence, which is GAG. And lastly, we have here um, CAG, which is starting here in position two. So we have the CAG. So this is like what we have determined for these. And um, again, this is what we have found. Motif start here. Motif um, start right here. Motif start right here. Motif start right here. And so we found them using um, mean. What are these motifs? So again, for sequence one, the ideal motif is going to be CAG um, for a sequence. Um, Two is going to be GAG for sequence. Three is going to be GAG again. And then for sequence four is going to be CAG. So it's pretty tied almost. And these were just some of the intermediate steps again. But now you can also check this out, what this looks like on mean. So um, pretty much that was a walkthrough of um, the expectation maximization algorithm. So if you have any questions at all, please ask me. I'd be really happy to help. And I really hope that this um, has helped you. Thank you guys so much. Um, take care. And, and again, I'm Sanya Kuller. So please let me know if you have any questions at all at mean, which is multiple expectation maximization for finding the motifs in these um, DNA sequences. Using this um, iterative like EM algorithm. <laughs>